If you're trying to get pregnant and you're trying to do it as quickly as possible, it's really important that you know when your body is ovulating. If you can time intercourse around the time of ovulation, you significantly increase the odds that you're going to get pregnant in maybe your first, second, or third cycle versus having to wait several menstrual cycles before you get pregnant. There's actually five ways that you can figure out when you're ovulating at home for a pretty reasonable price. The first thing you can do is use some type of an ovulation test. The second option is by tracking your basal body temperature with a thermometer. The third option is to actually look at and check the consistency of your cervical mucus. The fourth option is to track where your cervix is in your body and kind of the texture or the firmness of your cervix. And the fifth is that some people can actually feel when they're ovulating. So you actually have some discomfort or pain in your lower abdomen that actually tells you that your body is ovulating. Some of these options are really easy. Some of them are a little bit tricky. Some are super reliable and others are eh, not so much. That is exactly what this video is going to get into today. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Nicole, a pelvic floor specialist and probably just as important for this video is a mom myself. I've actually had three pregnancies. I now have two sons and I've learned a lot about my body and ovulation <laughs> over the last few years. About four years ago, me and my husband had been married for several years and we we're like, I think we're starting, we're ready to start growing our family. So I went off the birth control pill and we weren't trying, but like in my mind, we were going to get pregnant pretty soon because, you know, I wasn't on birth control and things were gonna happen quickly. Unfortunately, that just was not our experience. Actually, it took us 10 months for me to get pregnant for the first time. And in the course of that journey, I learned a lot about what is my body doing? Is my body ovulating? How do I figure out if it's ovulating? What do I need to do around the time of ovulation? What does that fertile window look like? And all the things in between. And talking about the five different ways you can figure out if your body's ovulating or not, I really wanted to tell you exactly how easy or difficult it is to use this certain type of tracking method and also how reliable or not reliable this tracking method is. Because sometimes we think, oh, we know exactly when our body's ovulating, but it turns out that method isn't that reliable and it kind of leads us astray and ends up making the process take a lot longer. One of the most common ways that women often try to figure out if their body is ovulating is by using something like an ovulation stick. You can see here there is little windows here and you read it very much like a pregnancy test and it tells you when your body is ovulating. How exactly does this stick work? What you do with the stick is you pee on the stick for about six seconds, you lay the stick nice and flat on a counter, and you wait to see what shows up in those windows. The way this test works is that it's looking for the amount of luteinizing hormone or LH hormone in your body. Because when our body is ovulating, there is a spike in the amount of LH hormone or luteinizing hormone in our bodies. And so when that line shows up really dark, that means there's lots of that hormone in our body and we are ovulating. When there's a faint line there, that usually means, okay, that hormone is starting to build up and ovulation is coming soon. So this stick can be really helpful because it is very accurate. So when it comes to the reliability of this test, it was anywhere from 80 to 90% effective in a research study that basically looked at all the different types of um, ovulation tracking that you can do. I'll go ahead and link in the description below that article in case you're interested. This ovulation test and some of the other ovulation tests actually say they're accurate up to 99%. So that's a really, really high rate of reliability. When it comes to the rating of ease to use, on a scale of one to five, like one is super easy, five is really, really difficult, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is about a two. It's really not that hard. I mean, you do have to pee on a stick, so there's a little bit of effort there. But other than that, you just let the test read it and it's very obvious whether it's positive, yes, you are ovulating, or negative, no, you're not really ovulating. Some of the pros of this ovulation stick are obviously that it's really, really easy to use and it's not difficult to interpret at all. It's either positive or it's not. Some of the cons of the ovulation stick is that it can get a little bit pricey. For example, you do need to pee on this stick every day that there's a possibility you're ovulating. And if you have no idea when your body is ovulating, you might go through 14 sticks to try to figure out, am I ovulating or am I not? Another con of this is that if you're solely looking at, okay, when am I ovulating? And that's when you have intercourse, you may have missed your window. So when it comes to ovulation, there's actually a six days of 
fertility. Sperm can actually live in your body for about five days and then your egg for ovulation is in your body for about 12 to 24 hours. So if you think about, okay, we could have intercourse five days before ovulation and then the day of ovulation, that's about six days total during your whole menstrual cycle that you could actually get pregnant. So if you don't start having intercourse until this shows up as positive, you may have missed some of those days leading up to ovulation that could have actually helped you get pregnant a little bit more quickly. The second way to know if your body is ovulating is to track your body temperature. They also call this basal body temperature or BBT tracking and all of them mean you basically want to take your temperature every single day and look for trends in your body temperature. Your body temperature actually dips a little bit before ovulation and then after ovulation has happened, it'll go ahead and increase slightly and then it'll stay increased until your menstrual cycle. Now, it is important that you have a specific thermometer when tracking basal body temperature. You want a thermometer that actually goes to the 100. So you have 98.6, that would be to the 10th or one place after the depth decimal, but you actually want it to go to the hundredth, two places after the decimal. So you would want it to look like 98.62 or what have you. You want to make sure that on that little screen there, you actually have two decimal places filled after the decimal. At service level, it seems like this thing would be really easy to use. So on my scale of one to five, of one being super easy and five being super hard, you might think, oh, that's like a two or something. But it actually is a little more tricky than that. I actually gave it a score of a four. And I gave it a four because you need to do this every day at the same time before you get out of bed, before you start moving, before you drink any water. And you also want to make sure you've got around the same amount of sleep every night. If you use alcohol the night before, uh, this can also impact the accuracy of this. And you really want to collect about five temperature readings that are very, very accurate per week in order to be able to get an accurate picture and be able to use your basal body temperature to know when you're ovulating. When it comes to the reliability of this method, there was one study that said it was only 22% accurate in detecting ovulation within one day. And there was also a study done by Natural Cycles, which is actually an app that relies heavily on basal body temperature to help women get pregnant or to avoid pregnancy. And their study showed that it was about 93% accurate with detecting ovulation. Um, and that's with just typical use, meaning there is room for human error. If it was perfect use, then the percentage went up to, I think it was about 99%. And again, I can link that article below if you want to look into it. I think the way to make this the most reliable is to pair it with one of the other ovulation trackers that I'm going to talk about in the rest of this video. Pros of this method are that besides the cost of the thermometer, it's completely free. All you have to do is get up, test your temperature every day, and move on. There's no other equipment you need to buy. You can buy apps to track it, but you can also just write it on paper. Some of the cons, though, of this method are that you really don't know for sure that you've ovulated until, again, after you've ovulated. So if you track it for several months in a row, you're probably going to notice patterns and that can definitely help you to have intercourse before ovulation happens. But if you're waiting for that dip, then you've probably missed most of, if not all of the window to be most fertile and to have intercourse within. And the other con of this method is that it's kind of hard to interpret the results. Like if you notice a small increase, is that enough of an increase? And if you notice a decrease, how significant does the decrease need to be? And also that there's a lot of room for human error. Let's say you had a restless night's sleep or you stayed out late with friends or whatever happened. And then this is not quite as accurate. So if you have a really irregular schedule or let's say you work third shift, this method alone at least is probably not the best way to figure out if you're ovulating. The third way to figure out if you're ovulating or not is to keep track of your cervical mucus. If you're like, mm, what's cervical mucus? <laughs> it's basically just the discharge that comes out of your body on a regular basis. It might not completely come out of your body and be on your underwear. For some of us it is, but you may have to actually reach up in your body to tell what your cervical mucus is. So during your cycle, you may have different kinds of discharge. You might have some that's like a little bit thick and sticky. You have some that's creamy. You have some that feels wet. And finally, you have the ovulation mucus. And this is basically a thicker egg white textured mucus. And if you put it between your fingers, it's very like 
it's like an egg white. It would stick to your fingers and it would kind of pull apart pretty easily. This mucus is telling you that your body is about to ovulate. So if you see that type of mucus and you want to get pregnant, you should definitely be having intercourse. When it comes to my one to five easy to hard scale, I'm going to go ahead and give this a one. This is like as easy as it could be. Basically all you have to do after you go to the bathroom, especially after you go poop, you just look at what is that mucus like. If you see that it looks like an egg white, that means that you're fertile. If it's not, if it's some other type of texture, that means that you're not quite as fertile. On the scale of reliability, I think it's kind of middle of the road. I give it about a three for reliability. The study said it was anywhere from 44% to 76% reliable that women were be able to say, yes, I'm ovulating within one day of ovulation. So that's pretty accurate considering there's no cost in your just basically paying attention to what your body is doing. The pros of this method are obviously that it's super, super cheap. There's really no cost at all involved. And you get to know what your body is doing and you understand how it works. Like, oh, this mucus actually helps sperm get where it needs to go. It's just teaching you a lot about how your body works. The cons of this method are that you might find it just kind of gross. Maybe you don't like to look at your underwear, pay attention to your discharge. You don't want to stick a finger up into your body and that all kind of makes you queasy and grossed out. And if that is so, then you might want to think about a different way to figure out when your body is ovulating. The fourth way to figure out if you're ovulating or not is to track the position of your cervix. Now, this one is pretty tricky. I would say on the scale of one to five of like one being super easy and five being really hard, this is like a five for me because most people don't even know where their cervix is, let alone being able to feel like, oh, is it soft and high? Because that means I'm probably probably ovulating, or is it more low and hard? Because if so, that's closer to menstruation. So to be able to really use this as a method, you'd really have to track it every day and be pretty accurate with what you're feeling. So I think it's it's pretty difficult to do. As far as the reliability of this method, I really didn't find a whole lot of research that just looked at finding the position of your cervix as a way to tell if you're ovulating or not. My personal opinion is that it's probably not very accurate because it's really hard to tell where your cervix is and what is it doing unless you are an OBGYN or a pelvic floor specialist or someone that works with cervix on a very, very regular basis. The pros of this would be that it's absolutely free and you're getting to know what your body is doing. It would definitely be helpful if you're a menstrual cup user and you need to know where your cervix is anyway. So it's a great way to figure out what's going on within your body. But the cons of it are that it's pretty tricky. It's hard to interpret what you're actually feeling. And it's not like on this one certain day of ovulation, your cervix is definitely gonna feel like this and it's not gonna feel like that anywhere else in your cycle. It's more like a rotating cycle of your cervix. So it'll give you some insight, but probably needs to be used with some other method to really be accurate. And then the fifth way to identify ovulation is if you actually feel ovulation pain. So sometimes women can feel these either like sharp twinges of pain or have like a dull ache in their lower abdomen on either their left or their right side, whichever ovary has released an egg. And they actually call this middle schmers. I don't know if I said that right. Middle schmers, something like that. It basically means middle pain, which means it's a pain that you experience in the middle of your cycle. I have to admit before I had my babies, I did not experience this ovulation pain. It wasn't until after the birth of my first son that I was like, oh, I'm kind of noticing like a pain. And when I timed it out, it was um, correlated with ovulation. Now on the easiness scale, this is like, again, one, super easy if you feel this pain, but five, really difficult if you have no idea what this pain feels like and you are not even sure if you experience this pain. So it kind of depends on the person there. As far as reliability, I do not think this is a very reliable method to use because it's basically based on a pain that could be caused by a menstrual cramp, could be caused by an exercise that you did, or maybe you have a tight psoas muscle. There's a lot of other factors that could maybe give you mixed signals. So it really shouldn't be the sole thing that you're looking at if you're trying to figure out whether or not you're Ovulating. Now that we know all the ways to track ovulation, the real question is, what do I use to track ovulation? Maybe that's not your question, but that would be my question if I was watching this video. After having three pregnancies, working with pelvic floors on a regular basis, hearing people's menstrual cycle symptoms all the time, I would say the best way to track ovulation is to use a combination of these trackers to really figure out when you're ovulating. If you have no idea when your body is ovulating, you've never tracked it before, I think starting with an ovulation stick is a really great place to start. It'll give you an idea of, okay, I see cervical mucus that seems like it's an egg white consistency. 
then take the test and see if it matches up. I think it's a little costly to continue to use ovulation sticks and quite honestly, I don't think it's necessary once you have a good understanding of the way that your body works. If you now know exactly what you're gonna do to find out if you're ovulating, go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help this video spread all over YouTube and I would totally, totally appreciate that. Now you know what to expect from your body during ovulation. The next question is, what should I expect from my body during my period? What's normal, what's not? If you've ever had any questions about that, this video over here is going to be really helpful in answering all of those questions. Thanks so much for watching today. I will see you all in the next video.